the saber tooth and the panther beast. This whole domain of animals who can kill us is now foreign to us. Right. Our earliest forms of consciousness being meat. And that is no longer something we're aware of. We are... Bring books. Giant sloths and saber-toothed cats. The homotherium group Mauricio Anton. Comparative anatomy, function, and evolution. Story of life. It's written in the language of bones, interpreted. Enlightening concepts. The tiger. Pantera tigris. Wow. 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 Despite our fandom of this animal, having seen Tiger King recently, we don't really respect them for what they are, and we don't respect their land. Powerful jaw. A large lower canine rooted deep in premolar, premolar, molar, carnassial. This V shape, that is a feliform feature. This huge, very, very characteristic lever arm coronoid process. The temporalis muscle would have attached down this rim, able to contract for a long period of time and repeatedly very long domed the skull is very wide wide zygomatic arches or cheekbones orbits a plunging face incisors small a long large thick stout round canine tooth premolar premolar large wide zygomatic arches with strong bone with long contracting crushing muscles large prolonged loads upon the skull Look at the back of the skull the mastoid processes less mobile neck which is held tight and the job of the neck of the tiger is just to keep its mouth where it needs to be so that the mouth and the jaw could do damage He lives alone and he hunts and kills solo. Big deer, um, boar, elk, bears even in Siberia. It can also take down buffalo, gallows, and elephants in some cases. Rushing bite force that is a lot more prolonged pressure across very tough skull meant for long resistance fights and battles. Jim Corbett, they both met people. Tigers today, their relationship with people across its landscape now, where people are unavoidable, they're part of the ecosystem with which the tiger has to tangle with. Where the tiger for a long time, the king of lands it occupied. It is a force up against that we have had the privilege to measure ourselves against. And we have won, if anything, against these animals. Tigers are important. They are much better stewards of the land than you. We need to make a place for tigers in our hearts and on our lands. This is a very important message. And we can read that language now. The saber tooth is not a tiger. He is its own lineage. He is its own specific flavor of spice.
Smilodon is a cat, like the cats alive today, but much, much older. There were two waves of cat. Everything started with Proilurus that led to a leopard side Pseudilurus who spread across the landscape and the ones that were leopard sized but had slightly more saber toothed teeth gave rise to Promegantereologia, Machairodus, and that was the wave of cats that just took over in size and became the dominant carnivores for about 10 million years. All the cats that are now lions and tigers, that role, that job, was being done by saber tooths. There are many different kinds of saber tooths, and the ones that we will focus on are of the Smilodontini. Smilodon fatalis is the North American lion sized saber toothed cat. The structure of this animal was different from cats today. It was The jaw is quite incredible. Those saber-toothed cats are able to open their jaw oh, so wide. That is reflected in the shape of this jaw. Chin has thickness, yet has these bolstering ridges. Its canines, which are right here, are very much part of the incisor battery. The coronoid process, which is where the masseter muscle are responsible for jaw stabilization, side to side jaw movement, underdeveloped, prioritizing different portions of its cranial musculature at different points. This is a different muscle group, much more developed. It's not a thin jaw. This is a hyena skull. Uh, the hyena, really high bite force. Smilodon, different kind of bite strength, but the thickness of the jaw is very much comparable. People have said that Smilodon has a weak bite. <laughs> no. Smilodon wasn't breaking bones. But Smilodon was seriously breaking other animals and there was breaking their fleshy, softer structures. We have incisors at the front. Canine, premolar, carnassial squat looking face. That is the face portion of Smilodon. The facial portion is elevated as to accommodate these canines which are rooted or solidly anchored in its face. The infraorbital innervation of the whisker pad of cats. The canine is serrated. There's a difference in color and texture between this upper area and this area. This was actually the canine's gum line. That is the extent of the pink gum line sensory input as to the depth of penetration and the arc of penetration of the canine. The way it did that is the way of its neck. It was very powerful. Anchoring for neck. Really large, the mastoid process. It is elongate all the way around the auditory bull and listening apparatus of cats and all carnivores. Not only was the jaw opening very powerful, but also action was very powerful. Have seven neck vertebrae in the same movement and action with very large differences in the proportion of the musculature. Note the roundness of this lambdoidal crest, this bone associated with strength deposition, tendinous fibers, and a lot of movement. A rounded top, much more pinched top. Smilodon had to go and deliver power throughout a much wider arc of range of motion. I'm just gonna get him proper grip. Absolutely. The chin has whiskers. In cats, for Raymond's, for neurology, the whiskers would have been fanned out. It would feel with its chin. It would go in, open its jaw, nod. Penetrate deep, and then rip its serrated canines, a very short, a 
burst of power, and then let go. That came as a sacrifice of a certain agility and of its tail. It was put to use as biological material elsewhere. A parcel with the whole evolutionary history of the saber-toothed cats. They were very efficient. And evolving that killing technique in a hypertrophied manner as opportunities and landscapes opened up to the saber-toothed cats. Megantereon gave rise to Smilodon gracilis from the east southeastern USA, and then Fatalis in the north, and then Smilodon populator in the south. The tiger appeared about three million years ago in southern Asia, but it had the cover of the forest. Pantera Zdansky having already certain tiger-like features, a very adept panther cat of the forest. It is in the forest that the tiger was able to make it stand, attain size, and later take over the role of dominant carnivore. Tigers were better suited for carrying prey out of dodge when they made their kill, versus saber-toothed cats had to kill, stay in one area, and stand and fight with other carnivores. I don't think they were able to carry their prey, and they certainly weren't able to stash up trees. Tigers, who are sexually dimorphic and whose males are significantly larger than the female's typical panther cat, the males have a territory that occupies the territory of several females, and that's how the social domain of today's panther cats. Smilodon is also a closed cover animal, as predicted by its body shape. Big, burly, thick, round, stocky, assassin killer, making its kills fast and quickly. It was not a fast, live, long-distance mover. Smilodon were not sexually dimorphic. In fact, all the skulls and specimens tend to look very much the same, with only very slight differences between the sexes. So an ecosystem niche completely gone today. Sabertooth niche is quite particular and I think affected the landscape quite specifically. Smilodon is extinct, not human reasons, yet it definitely encountered people. And what those encounters were like, I can scarcely even imagine what it would have been like. It would have been a spectacular sight to see this thing kill. The saber tooth is extinct, the tiger isn't. This one's future is in our hands. This is a very important message and we can read that language now. I thank you for watching.